Okay, if you got your Bible in your phone or you've got a regular Bible that you'd like to look at, you can turn to 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. And uh, welcome all you car rally people that are here today. A whole bunch of our river people are outside taking care of things. So um, we're glad you're here. And uh, we've, this is 17 years. It's hard to believe. 17 years of doing the car rally. It's super cool. Um, this scripture says this. Um, it says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. In the future, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. So there's something that Paul, who's writing this letter, to Timothy saying, look, this is something I've been doing. This is my story. I'm getting towards the end of the story and he's saying, I've fought the good fight. So the first thing that kind of says to you, life is not always easy, right? Life is not always easy. And many of you don't know, my wife went to heaven last November and my whole life changed because the person I was married to for 37 years and that we had become one was ripped away. And so now I was like without that and I was in agony. Now, five months later, through intense meditation and spiritual warfare, I received a radical inner, hearing, inner healing and got out of my agony. I'm still sad and I still miss Debbie and I wish you know, my family was intact, but it's not. And so that was part of my fighting the good fight, was not to capitulate to depression. So there's a, there's a fight going on in life. You know, uh, I was talking to Tim this morning. We both had melanoma. You know, many of you have had sicknesses and diseases. You've lost loved ones. You've lost jobs. You've, um, I know one person, you know, had their entire retirement stolen from them. You know, these things are catastrophic, you know, things, challenges in life. And so we have to realize we are in a fight. It's a fallen world and there's gonna be stuff going on and we've gotta battle our way through it. And then it says, I have finished the race. I've finished the course. And so there's a path laid out for each one of us. God has something for us to do in life. We're not just to, supposed to be, you know, sitting on the couch, eating potato chips and drinking pop. Now there's a time for that. But that's not the only thing we're supposed to be doing, right? In fact, that's better if that just happens once in a while. But we got to stay focused and we got to, you know, get up in the morning and say, God, what do you want me to do today? What have you got for me to do this week? What, have you, what, what things do you want me to accomplish in your kingdom? Because you know what? It says in Hebrews that there's an unshakable kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, which God has created, which is gonna hold up throughout eternity. Think about that everything else is going to fall down and collapse. All the empires in the history of the world, what has happened to them? They've gone away. We had, you know, great Mongol empires that covered the greatest surface of the earth. We had great civilization empires like the Roman Empire. We've had cultural empires like the British Empire where the sun never set on it and, it and it changed the whole course of the world. What's the common language people try to use when they speak to each other? English. We've had the United States of America which has become the greatest superpower in the world. But you know what's gonna happen in the United States of America someday? 
it's going to collapse. Everything is going to collapse, and only the kingdom of heaven is going to remain. And so think if Genghis Khan and Kublai Khan and Julius Caesar and Alexander the Great and on and on and on, if none of those empires are sustainable, what makes you think your empire is such a big deal? But what are we doing? We're trying to be general managers of the, general managers of the universe, aren't we? We're trying to manage the lives of the people in our family. And generally, what does that cause? When you're trying to manage other people's lives, what happens? Stress and anxiety, right? People don't like you running their life. My children don't like me running their life. And it's my job. It's even more fun when they become adults and you still get to run their life. <laughs> Isn't that where tension and stress comes from? We start to manage things that are outside our control. But the whole point is, we should be doing the things that really matter in the kingdom of heaven because that's what's going to last. And when you talk about gaining a crown of righteousness, it says that that's where you should be putting your focus on riches that transfer from the kingdom of this world into the kingdom of heaven, which is bringing people closer to God. That's what really matters. So if you're not doing that, you're probably doing something that isn't gonna matter. I have kept the faith. Faith means believing in something that we can't see. We can't see Jesus Christ risen from the dead. Now we've got plenty of witnesses who did see it. And we had a whole bunch of people back at the time of Jesus who checked up on it. But what we do know is that a belief system that's based on the most radical concept ever, somebody rising from the dead, is still the most prolific, life-changing force on this planet. That's Christianity. And it's rooted in in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's not rooted in Jesus came and gave us good teachings about how to live a good life. Yeah, he did that. But that wasn't the focus of his message. Jesus said he came to set the captives free. Jesus said he came to bring healing. Jesus said he came to, to hang on the cross and to rise from the dead. And then he said to these people, Poor disciples, a crowd about this big, maybe a little more, he said to them, hey, you go tell the whole world. And it wasn't until the Holy Spirit filled them with power that they could actually accomplish that. And I think that's one of the things, if you wanna keep the faith, you gotta realize you gotta believe something, but you can't do it on your own. So you gotta be asking God to infuse the Holy Spirit into you and to pour life into you and to pour joy into you and pour enthusiasm into you for every single day. Amen? Because life is good. It's hard, but it's good. And there's a lot of good things that you can do. There's a lot of things that you can do to change the world. This car rally may seem like, you know, well, you're telling me I should be focused on doing God things, so should I even have a nice car? Should I even have a nice house? Should I? Yes, you should. You should have what you can earn. You should have it. And my opinion is, this is a little rabbit trail, you should increase your personal economy as big as you possibly can so you can give away more and bless more people. Right? That's the way we ought to do it. But this car rally is super cool. Let me tell you a couple of really cool stories. Tim King sitting right there. He started this car rally back in 2003, right? This is the 17th year, so I think it would be uh, 2002, 2003. And, and Kenny Ballinger, who's out here running the car rally now, he came to one of those, either the first one, was it the first one? Or, he came and Kenny was not a Christian. And Kenny ended up giving his life to the Lord here at the river. And then he started doing the car rally with Tim for many years. And now he's still here. You know what? 
that changed the lives of many, 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 many people because many people through Tim and Kenny have now come into this church and given their lives to Jesus Christ over all these 17 years. You know that? That's a great story, isn't it? That's a great story. That's part of building the kingdom. In the midst of those years, there was a man named Larry McElnowney, and the, we have a traveling trophy, a memorial trophy for that now because Larry has, he died a few years back. But Larry came here, and Larry swore that he would never go on another church property again, but he decided he would come here for the car rally, and you know how I came out and invited everybody to come inside? He would not come inside. Every year I would go out and say, hey, Larry, you want to come inside for the service? No, I'm not coming in there. And after, I think it was the fourth or fifth year, I said, Larry, you want to come inside? And he did. He came inside. And Larry gave his life to Jesus Christ. And Larry started a ministry. He started a ministry reaching out to other people in the car, you know, in these kind of car rallies. And he started ministering to people and, and many lives were saved through that. And that goes all the way back to Tim starting this car rally right here at the church. Yeah. Isn't that super cool? <laughs> and so here's the important thing. Today, there may be somebody here who's never given their life to Jesus Christ. And today you can change your story, you can change history by asking Jesus into your life. And then we, you get to be read into this line. Then you can say at a point, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. And in the future, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who love his appearing. And so I want you to know that you have a crown of righteousness waiting for you. And the way to receive that is to ask Jesus Christ in your life as your personal Lord and Savior. Now, I'm going to use a word that, you know, it's, it's a Christian word, basically, and it's called repentance. Repentance means to do a 180. It means you're going one way, and you make a 180-degree turn, and you go back the other way. I heard one time somebody said, you know, repentance is doing a 360. And I was like, okay, you didn't mean to say that but <laughs> you just spin out and keep going the same direction. 180 means you're going that way and you change your mind and you decide to go that way. And that way is not another way that you want to go. That way is going God's way. It's doing it God's way. That's what repentance means. It means quit doing it your way and do it God's way. Now, a lot of people think, well, how do I, I can't be a Christian today. I can't give my life to Jesus because I just did some really bad stuff last week or last night or, or whenever and, or way back in my life I was so bad and God can never forgive me and, and so I, I can't be good enough to get into heaven. God's way is not for you to be good. God's way is not for you to, to go live right for six weeks and then come back to church and say, okay, now I can become a Christian. That's not how God does it. There was, when Jesus was dying, there was a thief on the cross next to him. And uh, the thief said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, today you're gonna be with me in paradise. What could the thief do to be good? What could he do to earn his way into the kingdom? Nothing. All he could do was cry out to Jesus and believe in Jesus. And he did. And that meant he, went, he was going in the paradise. Jesus said so. So right now, the only thing that's keeping you out of heaven and out of the kingdom of heaven and keeping you from having a part in this race and being in this course and, and, and fighting the good fight, doing all these things that you're supposed to be doing is do you believe and will you receive what he's done for you on the cross? It's just, a, it's just a simple matter of saying, okay, I want to quit doing it my way. I want to do it your way. I believe Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Come into my life, be my Lord, and you're born again. That's God's way of doing it. That's God's way. 
So you're going to do it your way or you're going to do it God's way? That's pretty simple, I think, right? And it's pretty cool. He did all the work. And so we have to receive it. Now, once you do, then you walk it out. Then you live what you believe. And if you want to do that today, I want to pray for you. And I want to pray a prayer. Now, and I've, I've been doing this for quite a few years now. Uh, it's the prayer of salvation. But I want to pray it in such a way that you're going to say the words after me. But this is not magic. Because you say the words after me does not mean you're born again. If you believe what you're saying and you repent and believe, then you're born again. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's all stand together. We're going to say this prayer, all of us out loud together. But if you repent and you believe it, you will be born again. And I got this thing that I want you to do. If, this, if you're doing this for the first time today, or if you're, if you're coming back to Jesus Christ today, and, and you know, you've, you, you've been a Christian, but you've kind of not been fighting the fight like you should be, and you've been off course, if you want to get back on course and get back in the fight, um, or if this is the first time you want to ask Jesus in your life, go out there and tell Kenny or tell Tim or tell me because that will bless them more than anything else in the world. Amen? Amen. Pray this with me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I'm, sorry I'm sorry for my sin. I changed my mind. I, changed my mind. I, want, to I want to do it your way, not my way. Not my way. Jesus, Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Cause me to fight the good fight. Cause me to run the race. Cause me to keep the faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Today we're doing things a little different. Normally we'd be having fellowship groups right now, but because it's Car Rally Sunday, we're just gonna do a blessing and then you'll be able to go out and enjoy the Car Rally. And once again, if you pray that prayer, please tell me, tell Pastor Drew, tell Pastor Katie, tell Kenny, tell Tim, tell somebody, okay? Lift your hands, receive the blessing. Father, I thank you so much for this wonderful group of people here today. And we thank you for the joy that you have given us through the power of the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ. And because he lives, we live. And we choose to really live, not just go through the motions, but we choose to really live like we sang about in the song. That we wanna let go of our pain and our sorrows and choose to keep our eyes on you. And we do this in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. And God's people in agreement said, Amen. We love you. Have the best week of your life so far.